Hollock took us on a wild journey, not through dimensions, but through the time and growth of its characters. But the series ended almost on a cliffhanger, with a few questions left unanswered. So here I will present each ending of Hollock and summarize what prominent questions remain, hopefully for which we may see answers for in a future Clamp installment. The main series ended in Volume 16, with its sequel series Hollock Row picking up right after in the same volume. This final chapter crosses over with Subasa Reservoir Chronicle chapters 231 to 232 in Volume 28, as Watanuki and Subasa Lee each decide to pay prices to repair the multiverse which Fei Wong Li damaged and his endeavor to keep Yuko alive, or bring her back from death depending on interpretation. Subasa Lee agrees to keep traveling dimensions, not staying in any one world for too long, and doing this until the price was paid, potentially when the multiverse is no longer unstable. Meanwhile, Watanuki agrees to stay in the shop for as long as it takes for his price to be paid. As such, with Yuko dead, Watanuki takes ownership of the shop in her place, and would continue to serve its patrons. But to further this, Watanuki imposes his own restriction that he will not leave the shop until Yuko returns, whatever form that may take. Admitted, admitting he will still die one day, he reveals that he will not age so long as he remains in the shop. Domiki considers to himself the egg left in his possession by Yuko. Earlier in the series, Yuko received payment from Sakura in post-apocalyptic Tokyo. Sakura was meant to retrieve one egg and exchange it to Yuko for the water Tokyo's residents needed. But when the egg arrived, it came to as two eggs, one item becoming two. The first egg Yuko gave to Watanuki for which it would hatch into whatever he wished for, thereby becoming a cute little bird immune to Himawari's bad luck, allowing it to accompany her through her life. The second egg was given to Domaki in secret by Yuko, with the explanation that it will never hatch and that it wasn't destroyed by a rain that could destroy buildings. Yuko mysteriously tells Domaki to keep it close for something that will happen in the future. This catches up to Domaki still holding the egg in Volume 16, as he says to himself that he will only be able to use the egg once, or rather that it will only ever need to be used once. Furthermore, Wanuki himself will be unable to use the egg. And so the series ends with Watanuki smoking Yuko's pipe, awaiting the day she finally returns. Hollick Row showcased Watanuki's continued storyline from about 4 years after Hollick's ending to approximately 117 to 147 years after. Row finishes the Hollick storyline in the entire series' 19th volume. Before jumping to the final chapter all those decades later, Shizuko wonders if the egg is meant to protect something or someone he cares about. The egg has since been passed down through his family line and is currently last known in the possession of his great-grandson Sayaka Domaki. The final chapter of the series sees Watanuki having dreams of a butterfly as he tries to discern their meaning. Watanuki even says the dream will continue. This may be a similarity on the translation's end, but if it's more than that, it echoes the line the dream must end, which always referred to the dream of keeping Yuko alive. After a while, the dream reveals itself as Yuko's dream before she died, as she wished to convey a message to Watanuki when the time was right. In the dream, Yuko carries a bird cage with Watanuki's signature bird inside. The cage opens and the bird flies away, inferring that Watanuki has paid his price to keep the multiverse in balance and can leave the shop again as he is no longer bound by his cage. As Watanuki later discusses this with Sayaka, he reveals he's run the shop for far over 100 years. He says he will never forget Yuko, but likely will never see the real Yuko ever again. He conveys that even though he can leave the shop, he will continue to run it until Yuko returns. The last bit of dialogue is then spoken by Sayaka to himself, believing it still isn't time to use the egg. He says that even after all those years, forgetting Yuko seems like it would be more painful than not forgetting. The series then ends with Watanuki again smoking the pipe as the dream bird flies free around the smoke. In the OVA Hollick Row, Watanuki takes on a job involving a fox spirit at a local house, as a young woman inherits the job of being an Azuna user. While Watanuki is still confined to the shop, Domaki investigates in his place via a video camera. At one point in the episode, Domaki, while holding the egg, implies that Yuko is probably the only person who can give Watanuki what he wants most. Meanwhile, at the end of the camera's recording, as Watanuki is watching, the Izuna Yunus speaks into the camera in Yuko's voice, saying, I'm back, Watanuki.
When Anuki later speaks into the night, welcome back, Yuko. Although this episode's version of events depicts Yuko's returning, the true final episode focuses on Watanuki working for Haruka to protect Suzuka from powerful spirits out to kill him in dreams. This is during the Adeyume OVA, Ro Adeyume. During these dreams, Watanuki sees a redacted version of when Suzuka receives the egg from Yuko, not knowing what he received, but knowing she told him to hold on to the item for the sake of what will come, and to not hesitate to use it when that time comes. Watanuki admits those words weren't for himself, so he doesn't need to know their meaning. Over the rest of Watanuki and Shizuka's conversation, Shizuka invites Watanuki to Shizuka and Kohane's wedding, an event only covered in the anime. Nonetheless, Shizuka states Kohane cares most about Watanuki, and of course the anime ends with Watanuki and Shizuka arguing over something small, in this case Shizuka calling Kohane by her last name, even though they're about to be married soon. What video covering the ending of Holic would be complete without a nod to the appearance of Watanuki in Blood Sea? In his implied midquel to Holic, Watanuki continues to run the shop and uses a dog familiar to monitor Saya Kisaragi from afar. After she remembers who she is, she later visits the shop to procure a sword. Here, Watanuki remarks that the two of them have lived abnormally long lives. How long is unclear. But the more I rewatch the series, the more I question if Blood Sea occurs before or after the ending to Roe. Saya is implied to be upwards of 200 years old, maybe more, maybe less. So Watanuki's comment at the least would imply himself to be 90 years old, but likely far older. At any rate, Blood Sea implies that Yuko still hasn't returned over 100, if not 150 to 200 years later. Holic Ray, as its name implies, marks a return to the series. Set right before the ending of the Holic Rose series, likely right after the final chapter featuring Suzuka Domaki before jumping decades into the future, Rei serves primarily as a companion piece to Tsubasa World Chronicle No I Can I. In the Tsubasa sequel, Tsubasa Lee and company continue their journey into the world of No I Can I, but need the assistance of Watanuki. In Rei, Watanuki pr procures helpful items for the group and then is thrust into a crisis involving Zashiki Watashi in Volume 4. Since most places of purity and honesty on Earth are being uprooted, Zashiki Warashi is essentially being poisoned by impurities which, if not stopped, will turn her into a Shuka, a curse. With how powerful the curse is, plenty of parties want that power for themselves, including the Spider-Woman. The current cliffhanger of Rei is that someone called the Time-Space Witch wants this power. This witch title, of course, was Yuko's. Meanwhile in Rei, Domaki still wonders if he could even use the egg if he knew the time had come. Domaki infers that he has been watching Watanuki still grieve for Yuko and wish her back after all these years. As we can see, Holic has had several endings over its lifetime. Naturally, only the manga is canon, save for the anime events of Blood Sea, but the other counts still offer things to think about. The first question to address is, will Yuko ever return? The answer in short is no. In Tsubasa, Fei Wong admitted that Yuko had ceased to exist in all worlds when she died, and without his master plan of shattering the laws of the multiverse, she can't be brought back from the dead. That said, people can be reincarnated in the Holic Dimension, and so this is Watanuki's best hope to meet Yuko again. Nonetheless, even if she reincarnated, there's no guarantee she would remember her past life or have any of her previous magic. Fans of Teen Titans may consider a terror scenario where if Watanuki did meet Yuko again, she wouldn't remember anything nor wish to have anything to do with Watanuki, which would be quite heartbreaking. As for reincarnation, the holic dimension is unclear as to how long it takes for reincarnation to occur. Clovis was instantaneous, but he had more magical power than anyone, and so could reincarnate himself immediately. A similar case of instant reincarnation, or at least implied instant reincarnation, is Kobato Hanato. After she died as an unfortunate casualty in Iorogi's Assault on Heaven, she was allowed one year to heal the hearts of many, many people if she wanted to be reincarnated among people who would love her. After this year, she was allowed to reincarnate, presumably immediately, so that 16 years later she could meet her love interest Fujimoto again, while he was still in his prime. The only other instance of reincarnation we have is in Wish with Shuichiro Kudo, a, the human love interest of Kohaku. Shuichiro died and was reincarnated approximately 83 years later, Meanwhile, in Kabato's alternate timeline, he has reincarnated several times over Kohaku's life. 
One may assume that the royal family of Cloak Country will reincarnate a version of their card character counterparts if this country is set eons in the future, but if so, we have no way of knowing if there were reincarnations before this or not. All this to say that evidence suggests Yuko should reincarnate sometime, but when is anyone's guess, but definitely sometime after Rose ending. The second question is, what is the egg for? The egg has been teased since its reveal in Volume 10, but Roe has shown us that even after over a hundred years, the time has not come to use it. If anything, Shizuka may have even missed the opportunity to use it since it has been passed down all the way to his great-grandson. After rereading the ending, I came to the same conclusion the internet seems to be screaming, which is that the egg contains Watanuki's memories of Yuko, so if Domaki uses it, Watanuki can move on. Now maybe the Ballantine books didn't translate it accurately enough to say this as well as the wiki, but after all these years of thinking, I agree that this is the most logical conclusion. As such, if Domaki ever uses the egg, this may free Watanuki from his attachments and let him live his life, which he has self-caged. There may be merit to this if Yuko's death, which finished in the shop's separate but attached dimension. So if Yuko's death having been in a separate dimension means she cannot reincarnate. If this is correct, Watanuki will wait forever for something that will never happen, meaning the egg is his only freedom. One possibility I might suggest is that Dom the Domaki line will never even use the egg. If my current theory is correct that Cloak Country is a distant future to Holic and Card Capture, then post-apocalyptic Tokyo is too. Perhaps the egg survived all this time and is in a time loop, and so the egg Sakura obtained it was the egg that was never used. We may never get an answer to this, but it is something to consider. Given the information we have, we can safely say the ending to the Ro OVA is non-canon as Yuko hasn't returned. But what about the Adayume OVA? We know she's a Kumaris and he has a kid at some point, so there's nothing inherently contradictory about marrying Kahane. So perhaps this is a canon continuation. I like to kind of compare it to uh, Tokyo Babylon OVAs. They are completely unique stories, but they don't contradict the overall and could be inserted anywhere in the middle of the manga. So perhaps it might just be a simple canon OVA on the side. The final major question becomes, what does all this mean for Holic Ray? Well, Ray was teased to be continuing in spring of 2023, though I would expect a delay as Clear Card isn't finished yet and Clamp hasn't announced anything on their calendar. But if it does continue, I am expecting, I'm expecting the following. Firstly, I doubt the time space witch is Yuko, but instead an impersonator. Ray likely takes place 11 to 20 years after Holic proper ends, which may be enough time for Yuko to return if instantly reincarnated, but with only a teenage level of magic experience, it doesn't seem right to believe this person wanting a Shuka curse would truly be Yuko, unless perhaps in an echoed existence. I may be wrong, but given Yuko doesn't seem to have returned in Rose ending, I doubt this is her. Regarding the egg, it would make sense for Shizuka to learn what the egg is for in Rei, and as such pass that knowledge down to Saika. If in fact that uh, the translation and the internet is correct and that Saika truly knows what the egg is for at that point. Which seems correct. Or probable. But we obviously will not see the egg used unless they wish to retcon Rose ending. The greatest hope I would expect is to see another Tsubasa companion piece, so that we can see if there's any progress on bringing the clones back to life, or Tsubasa Lee manages to pay his debt so he can live the rest of his days in Clo Country with Tsubasa. But one final question I do have regarding Holic's ending is what happened to Moro, Moro, and Black Mokina? None of them have appeared in Rose's final chapter or Blood Sea. More and more are soulless beings whose essences are tied to maintaining the shop, so I could definitely see them as not being super active during certain days, especially if they have to use all their magic to maintain the shop's existence. But still, what about Mokina? We saw in Blood Sea that he has been revealed to the world, although maybe not in the same way we see in Kobato's anime with the whole Mokina theme park and him on a giant TV screen. But the concept of a Mokina is at least prevalent on computer systems, GPS systems, and figurines or plushies. Uh, in the Blood Sea anime, of course. It is unclear how long Mokina lived for. They were cloned based on a literal god, so perhaps they can live hundreds of years, but it is quite unclear. Perhaps Mokina went into the world and made a name for himself. Perhaps his image simply became a mascot icon for a customer. Perhaps he died and these images are his legacy. 
overall, the disappearance of these three characters is the true biggest mystery of the series that we may never get answered. So, I hope this helped to summarize the various endings of Holic, and at least put us as a where are we now with Holic kind of moment.